Um, so in case you don't know, I, I mentioned Sneed today is gone last week. That was seized by donuts. Um, this week or on the weekend, immediately after my stream, there was another development. Um, and at the exact same time, my YouTube account was banned. So I don't even get to really tell people what's happening. I have to like sneak out fucking messages wherever I possibly can. I'm thankful that uh, Telegram is up despite it being like mangled. I don't think you can w view the Telegram from like certain for certain phones and you can't view it like at all without being signed in. So I had to create like an archive site to get the fucking telegram messages out. And then I sent Andrew Torba a message like, Hey, people want me to post updates on Gab, but I lost access to my Kiwi farms account. Cause that's on an email account. That I don't have access to anymore. Can you like, let me back in? No reply from them whatsoever. I get like people just, I don't even get like dignified replies to my emails anymore. We're just like, uh, no, we're shitting ourselves in fear. Uh, you are the Grim Reaper holding a, uh, a fucking scythe. And you're tapping on the window of our front door with the tip of that scythe. When, tick, 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 tick. Let me in. Let me in. And we don't want that. We want nothing to do. I don't even get a fucking email. Like, people are, are, are like terrified of me. Just use Matrix. Matrix sucks. The fucking Matrix server is down. It gets, it gets canceled like everything else. In fact, I remember the Matrix was in such a sorry state that Crunk Lord basically had it locked down where you couldn't even get in. Nobody knows what the fuck Matrix is. The the RAM consumption for Matrix, despite it being just another another goddamn motherfucking Chromium app, is like eight gigabytes to open a fucking uh, a Discord. And Discord's the same thing. Discord's also Chromium, and it's not eight gigabytes of RAM to open Matrix. Nobody nobody fucking uses it. I've never heard anybody talk about matrix in a positive way even crunk floor says it's soy dev it's shit so yeah it's it's i mean it's, it's just irritating um and it sucks that when people do help us they get slapped down for it uh and here's the here's the big thing let's change okay um i found a provider willing to put us up in washington the issue is, is that he and his data center and his upstream do not have DDoS protection for layers three and four. And just to very briefly remind you, there are multiple layers in the what's called the OSI schema or whatever the fuck. Layers uh, three and four are network bandwidth level, basically. And level seven is the application. When you say it's a level three or four attack, it just means there's so much bandwidth that there's not enough bandwidth on the, the, the fiber, like that port is overwhelmed. Application level DDoS attacks are something where it's like they craft requests so that it's not bandwidth based. It just tries to get the server to do too much and then it can't respond to normal requests. So when I build like Kiwi Flare, that's a layer seven DDoS protection, but layer three and four is trickier. You have to actually have the bandwidth, which costs lots of money. If you want, for instance, I've seen attacks on the Kiwi farms that are layer three and four and they're over a terabit per second. And a terabit per second of bandwidth, it's something like $50,000 a month. If you want a one terabit per second port, you're going to have to pay $50,000 just to handle the incoming traffic. So never mind the, the, you know, the hardware to actually filter that. So it's a big deal. However, here's the caveat. Um, DDoS attacks come from compromised servers. Compromised servers mostly come from Brazil, South Africa, China, basically uh, industrializing countries. Most industrialized countries have mechanisms for dealing with compromised computers, not those countries. So older areas, industrializing areas, still have older computers that are IPv4 only. So there's IPv6, which is basically insulated from DDoS attacks in layer three and four because it only comes from um, industrialized countries like Japan and the US and Europe and, and so on. So if you can get IPv6 up, you basically don't have to worry about three and four DDoS protection because you're already automatically insulated from it just by the, the, the fact that the IPs are so new. So we get them to announce IPv6 and it goes through Hurricane Electric. That's the upstream. If you don't know, in the world of computing, Hurricane Electric is the internet backbone. Hurricane Electric has over 100 terabits per second of throughput. They have more peers than any other ISP. They have more fiber optic cable, I'm pretty sure, than any other ISP in the entire world. They are the internet backbone. Within two days of this IPv6 announcement going up and very silently being used on Sneed.today, 
nowhere else. It's not being used to broadcast the evil Kiwi Farms on .NET. Uh, Hurricane Electric blocks our announcement, which means that the largest ISP, the most well-respected, one of the oldest ISPs in existence, their their AS number, for instance, my ISP's AS number is like 390,000. Their AS number is like 40 or something. They're one of the first. They're really old. Um, they, they shut it, they shut it down and they shut it down and they, they politely say over email, um, you have violated this, this, uh, service violates our AUP. We will not elaborate further. I've worked here for the guy even said, I've worked here for 20 years. I've never seen this before. I cannot explain more. That's it. That's all we get. So, um, the, here's the, um, here is the the catch with this uh is that our isp was based in liberty lake washington washington is one of two states in the entire country the other being texas that has net neutrality texas's net neutrality is currently tied up in courts and uh washington's is not however the what the issue with washington's um net neutrality is that in order to bring forth a net neutrality complaint, you have to go through the attorney general. You have to go through the office of the attorney general. It's, it's the other way around. It's like just called the attorney, attorney general office, uh, the AGO. And you have to compel a man, a lifelong committed liberal Democrat from the city of Seattle, uh, Seattle and Washington state to bring forth a government complaint to Hurricane Electric for their censorship of the internet. So, um, uh, Incognet, which is our ISP has filed a complaint with the AGO. Uh, their ISP crunch bits, uh, has filed a complaint with the AGO and I am preparing to file a complaint with the AGO as well. And I'm going to see if I can get my attorney to file a complaint for me with proper official letterhead and everything. Um, and we'll see what happens because I really don't know. It's literally uncharted territory. This law has never been enforced ever in its history. It's brand new. The other one in Texas is in, tied up in the Supreme Court or something. It's not going to be usable for a while. And um, technically, under the law, we are equitable. We get equal enforcement. And if he refuses to bring forth a, a suit, I can sue the attorney general. I can call, I can ask for what's called a mamandus. I believe it's uh, how it's said. It's uh, Latin for uh, literally we order it. And I can ask the court to order the attorney general to enforce its laws fairly. Because I've read through the law. It's very simple. And it has, it basically just says this. If you're an ISP, you may under no circumstances degrade service or cancel service for any legal um any legal customer in the state of washington um so that's just how it is and i'm gonna pursue it because this is ridiculous i want to what's crazy is that the complaints that we get aren't even like they show no content from the site it's literally just, and this is the cathedral in action. It's literally just a link to the Wikipedia page. And all it says is, this is a very bad site. Here is their Wikipedia page. It's been deplatformed everywhere else. Here's a statement from Cloudflare saying that they deplatformed it. Therefore, we expect that you will deplatform this as well. Thank you. And it works. That's all it is. It's like the simplest complaint in the entire world. And for whatever reason, it has caused a level of unprecedented clamping down on a shitty little forum um, without any actually linking to anything on the site at all. They just take this at this word. Oh, Wikipedia says it's a bad site. Therefore, it doesn't get to exist. That's all it is. Um which is why the internet should be regulated as a common carrier because there is absolute like hurricane electric should not be looking at a complaint like this. There shouldn't be a secretary reading a Wikipedia page, making a judgment call off of that. 
they should be able to say, I can't take down this website because it's not legal for me to do it. And if you have a, if you believe it is illegal, you should take it to the police. And I don't understand why it's not like that. The only common carrier protections in the entire country are for landlines. And techno and when we passed these laws, it was like the 40s, the 30s and the 40s when, when Bell was a telephone company. And now we have uh, the internet, we have mobile phones, and we've never brought common carrier protections to mobile phones, mobile internet, or um, the internet in general. So it, it it's... It's just baffling to me. I really, I really never, I never could have imagined even years ago when like the deplatforming stuff was happening. I'm like, they're not going to get like hurricane electric to censor. They're not going to get Cloudflare to censor. Like that's, that's as un-American as it gets. And yet it, it keeps happening and it's, it's literally happening for the first time ever. That's the crazy thing. It's like, um, it's not like this is precedented because it's not. This is the new people in these companies who have been given the keys to one of the most important inventions, if not the most important invention in human history, which is the simultaneous instantaneous connection of every human being on the planet to each other. We've given them the keys to handle this gift that the last generation created the, some of the best and brightest minds of, you know, Europe and America created together. And they drive it like, you know, a ignorant teenager borrowing dad's car for the first time. I go, it's not my car. So who cares if I fuck it up? You know, it's just reckless, reckless disregard for, um, the principles and ideas that that built the thing that they have somehow gained access to. It's a uh, it's a little bit disappointing, but as I've said before, it's not illegal, so I'm just going to keep doing it forever. I will continually find new providers. If it gets um, bad, like I can just chop up the site into different parts or I can rebrand it. I can do all sorts of stuff. I have all sorts of stuff that I can do that I've never, I've not even attempted. Like right now I'm still going through every internet service provider on, on the planet. Um, and then I will get litigious. I will not stop pursuing this shit in Seattle. Uh, I, ha I, I have a right to stay online in in seattle in washington and then when texas uh, anti-censorship law is done being litigated i'll probably set up shop there too and if they take me down there i'll sue them too and i will just do this forever um the the hard thing is just trying to organize it all like there's there's so much that i personally have to deal with um and it's very hard i like i can't really share the burden with anyone um, like the, the stack for the Kiwi farms right now contains like six different, com six different dedicated servers and as many data centers across the world. And then if anything in that breaks, you know, I have to fix it. There is, I I'm fleshing out like a DDoS mitigation thing. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm juggling a lot all at once. And then I also have to keep up like. The DNS, I have to do my own DNS. I have to, um, and I'm very thankful for what does stay up right now. I like, I'll give you an example. Right now, we're on kiwifarms.pl, and the reason why I switched it to .pl is because w right now we're currently our, our entry point to the public internet is a is a pretty sizable ISP in Poland called Host Team. It's weird. It's like Host Team, but with only one T, and it's just some Polish company. They, I have never spoken with them. I have no idea who they are. I, I've never dealt with them and somehow they keep us online. And I, I really don't, I, I pay them like $50 a month for my BPS and they don't send me any complaints. They never ask me for anything. And, uh, I, re I really just don't get it. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. 
I don't know why they don't care. Um, I'm a little like I'm very nervous about that situation because I don't know what the fuck is going on in Poland. Um, but there's at least one person in Poland who uh, is taking complaints and burning them because hosting was also the only one that didn't drop Kiwi from Zentnet way back when. So. So I am. I'm I'm very very disappointed i'm kind of taken aback by like hurricane electric dropping us because now <laughs> hurricane electric is it's like with cloudflare it's like hurricane electric is so respected in the industry that hurricane electric dropping us is like it's a it's a serious indictment because now you can just point to cloudflare and hurricane electric has dropped kiwi farms and to most people who are lazy and insipid and Craven, they will see Hurricane Electric and Cloudflare, two of the largest technology companies in the entire world that have ever existed, two of the largest companies that have ever existed, period, in human history, uh, drop the Kiwi Farms. And they're, they're reputable, and they're known for being very content neutral. So if they drop the Kiwi Farms, oh my God, it must be like a 24 seven neo-Nazi rape and murder fest over there. Like it must be the worst place that's ever been existed. Meanwhile, you know, Stormfront is up. Um, the daily storm is on fucking Google cloud. I guess I should try Google cloud next. Uh, you have, you know, the animal torture image boards. You have all these sites dedicated to soft core child pornography that are on the clarinet. And you just have all this awful stuff that g transit through HE and they transit over Cloudflare and they stay up and nobody gives a fuck. And for whatever reasons, it's the Kiwi Farms. And nobody has ever really sat down and explained what the fuck is happening. Nobody has. I have never heard anybody explain what the fuck is happening except that some. Uh, apparently, there's enough people in tech who really hate the Kiwi Farms. And by the way, um, one of the first things I want to point out is this guy. Um, his name is Patrick W. Gilmore. Someone pointed out to me that he made this tweet saying, what was the second DDoS? I, oh, never mind. Um, Gilmore, why do you think any company has to provide a platform for speech? My understanding is that HENet has a first amendment right not to carry your content legally protected or not. I'm not a lawyer. Perhaps someone like bad legal takes or U.S. consent or amend one could educate both of us. Um, this guy sounds like a nobody. He's a, he has a fucking pronouns in his name. Who could he possibly be? Uh, if you look up his LinkedIn, he's not just some guy. He, number one, he is a UCLA member. He is the chief. He was a former chief network architect of Akamai or Akami. I don't know how you pronounce it, which is one of the largest content distribution networks in the entire world. Like if you watch streaming video on any platform, that's not Google or Facebook, chances are the video is coming off of Akami. Uh, he was a former board member of Aaron, which is scary to me because Aaron is the, um, uh, RIR of the North America who allocates IP addresses that I'm broadcasting Aaron does. So this guy sat on the board of one of the most important organizations in the entire world, the people who control IP addresses in the United States. And he doesn't believe that private companies have any responsibility whatsoever to tolerate things that are illegal, but that they disagree with. Um, he is a member of the Seattle Internet Exchange, which is very pertinent because that's what this um, takes place in. That's why he's even responding to it. And IX is um, when you have a bunch of ISPs in one data center or in data centers near each other. They join what's called an Internet Exchange, and they all physically connect to each other and provide free transit to one another. Um, they're very important, and the one in Seattle is one of the largest in the entire company. So he's, he is involved with the IX that this takes place in. And he also, he says that every data center, uh, every ISP in Seattle should be able to deplatform whoever the fuck he wants. Um, he actually, he's a current board member of the uh, Seattle IX. Uh, and he's the co-founder of PeeringDB, which is the tool that Liz Fong Jones and others use to find our ISPs. It maps out basically how the internet's laid out. You put in ASN, you'll find out all their IP addresses and all the um, 
all the upstreams they have makes it very nice and easy for you to figure out exactly who to send your complaints to and who to terrorize to try and get shit taken down. And he is also the current full-time managing network engineer of Meta or Meta. I don't know how you pronounce it, but he's one of the most important people in the entire industry. This guy is like at the very tippy top of Facebook's parent company mapping out the internet. And he looks at, at, at um, one of the largest companies in the entire world hacking off parts of the internet because he doesn't like what's being said on that part of the internet. And he goes, yeah, this is fine. In fact, it's not just like one casual tweet. He went through and he liked a bunch of shit directly related to drop, drop Kiwi farms. This is um, him responding directly to a sincere, the 50 year old tranny who plays Fallout 76 for 16,000 hours. He's just, actually, this guy in particular is responding to Cord Kitty, who's like a pedophile furry, responding to a granny tranny with 16,000 hours in uh, Fallout 76 that he got banned from because he's such a piece of shit. And this is who, one of the most important people in the entire country, in the entire world as far as the internet is concerned, backs. And it's like, how? How, how did we allow it to become this? How do we allow these people to take the nerd's gift to mankind and twist it? This man wants the internet to be a private walled garden where he and his little business buddies can uh, erect a fucking pearly gate that only very select few can enter. Only Meta should be allowed to have the internet. There should only be Instagrams and Facebooks and Twitters. Small businesses that want to plug in to the internet. Sorry, buddy. There's like three ISPs that actually put you on the internet in these days. And uh, they get to do whatever the fuck they want. And in fact, I'm a board member of every single internet organization um that's involved in the dispute and i don't like you so um it's called the first amendment buddy look it up <laughs> it's called my right to associate uh my right to associate you out the fucking door retard don't like it build your own internet faggot <laughs> it's intolerable so um, that is the update. Right now, the site is up. And there's an infinite number of ISPs that continue doing this. But I will, I will, I will absolutely, I don't care if it bankrupts me. I will, I will fucking sue the, the attorney general if he doesn't. He, the Hurricane Electric has violated my rights as a business doing business in Seattle to be on the internet. They have broken the law. I have requested that the state attorney general of Washington, or I will request, my ISPs have requested for me already, uh, have requested that um, my my rights be enforced and their rights be enforced because they as ISPs have been prohibited from um, exercising their rights of promoting whatever content they want to. And if they don't enforce it, I, I have no choice. I have to pursue it in court. Because what am I going to do? Just allow this to happen forever? This is the first time where I actually have recourse. And the only way that the Attorney General of um, Washington could say that the law doesn't apply here is to say that Section 230 overrides it. He could make the, he could try to, I guess he could try to make an argument. HE certainly would that um, his own state laws don't fucking matter because federal law overrides it, <laughs> which would be an interesting argument for the state to make. I don't have to enforce this law because I don't actually believe that it, it, it exists. <laughs> um, I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, Tor is up, and I know that right now the, the shitty thing is that Tor is... Um, not reliable. It is up. So if you get like a disconnection, disconnected message, just restart tour. There's like a couple of nodes that are bad or something, but it will go up. Um, and here's the real kicker. I do have a plan 
for actually getting the site back up properly on my IPs. Uh, I'm I'm just waiting for it to happen, and when it comes up, I will. Uh, you will be able to connect to it even if we're off the internet, even if the big ISPs won't put us on. Um, if you just take the Tor browser and you try to connect to the domain, it'll work no matter what because of, uh, like I, I've talked about this before, but the Tor browser can find a route even if there isn't a direct route from your computer. It's it's intelligent. So um, I just want to remind people uh, that soon, if something happens, you will still be able to connect to it through Tor, even if it's over ClearNet. It is internet magic, basically. Because what it does is it just asks all the different uh, guard nodes, can you connect to this website? And it just picks one that says yes. Um, so it's very robust and being able to find, because it's built that way to get over internet sensors. Like you try to connect to, you know, whatever website from China and it says, sorry, you can't connect to that IP address. It's banned in China. Well, you connect to Tor and then it finds a way around the great firewall which is effectively what I'm doing. I'm going to have to find a way to let people connect to my website around a, a privatized great firewall. It's a private company toll, toll firewall, basically. Um, you're going to have to, uh, behave like a criminal to, to get to it. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA. Remember to like, and subscribe.